fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, Big Paul. I'm Silver. Hooray! Mrs. Molly Carson, busy in the kitchen of her small house on the edge of town, looked up expectantly as she heard the front door open and close. Mom. Oh, Mom. I'm out here, Bob. Uh, I have a surprise for you, Mom. Well, what brings you home from the bank so early, son? I wasn't expecting you to... Land sakes, bringing Mary Blake right into my messy kitchen. Oh, don't mind me, Mrs. Carson. Mom, Mary and I, were we're going to get married. Mary, I don't know what to say. I have to sit down. Oh, gee, Mom, I know you and Mary will get along and everything will be fine. Of course, son. It was a shock to me to think my boy was grown up all of a sudden. Mary, I know Bob and you will be very happy. I'm sure of it, Mrs. Carson. Mr. Blake has offered to take me into the bank as a junior partner, Mom. He insists on it. Land's sakes, I... I can't believe it. Now, just when are you planning on having the wedding? In about a month. Your father would have been very proud, son. Bob has told me how wonderful his father was. Yes, of course. Bob was too young to remember, but I've told him all I could about his father. He must have been very brave. Bob told me his father was... was killed while helping to capture some outlaws. That was over in Pecos County, wasn't it? Yes. Later, I brought Bob here to Clarkville with Bob's Uncle Tom, my brother. Oh, yes. I've met Tom Jensen. Tom lives here with us, you know. He was my only brother and much younger than I. I've always looked after him, sort of. I... I guess Uncle Tom means well, Mom, but... Well, I wish he'd stay away from the cafe. Oh, I'm marrying you, Bob, not your Uncle Tom. So let's not worry about him. Now, come along, darling. I have to get home. And I promised Dad I'd see you back at the bank within an hour. <laughs> All right, let's go then. Well, goodbye, Mary, dear. Run in any time. I will. Goodbye. See you at supper time, Mom. Goodbye. Goodbye. Land's sakes. It's all so sudden. Isn't that Bob who's just in here, Molly? Yes, Tom. Bob and Mary Blake. They're going to be married. What? 
You mean Bob's going to marry Banker Blake's daughter? That's right. Oh, I think it's wonderful. I'm so proud of Bob. Yeah, you have the kid thinking his old man was some kind of a hero. Why haven't you told him the truth? That his father killed a man and lit out for Arizona 17 years ago. Oh, please, Tom, forget it. You promised. For Bob's sake. Heaven forgive me for telling him what I did, but... But all I could give him was a good memory of his father. Well, if he ever runs on to the truth, he won't thank you for telling him what you did. Well, Bob's 20 years old now. About time you quit traveling. It was about two weeks later... The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding from Clarkville toward their camp in the hills with supplies. As they rounded a curve in the trail, they saw a rider coming toward them, a large man with a heavily bearded face. Seeing the masked man an Indian, he stopped and drew a gun. Watch out, Kima Sabi. Oh, boy, easy, Silver. Come on, Silver, get him up to the count. Oh, Silver, hold it. Oh, fella. You drew on us without warning. Hey, sir, sure, you were outlaws. That was your mistake. We're not outlaws. Sorry to hurt you, but you were too careless with that gun. Silly big fella, easy. I'll get your gun and I'll look at your arm. I'll just keep this gun for the time being. Now, let's see how badly you're hurt. Not as bad as you thought. Just a scratch. Bad enough to be painful. You sure are quick on the draw, stranger. Comes in handy at times. It sure does. That was close shooting, too. I'm sorry I lost my head, but seeing that mash... Yes, I know. Are you from around here? Not exactly. Rode down from Arizona. Used to be over in Pecos County. Well, if you come with us to our camp nearby, we'll attend to your wound. Oh, easy, Silver. Since you have my gun, I guess you ain't much else to do but trust you. Very well. Come along with us. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Get up there. Short time later in the Lone Ranger's camp. Yeah. That fix I'm good. Thanks, Indian. Going far? Well, right now I was aiming to go to Clarkville. Know someone there? Well, I, I'm hoping to find someone there I know. The fact is, I'm hunting information about a woman named Molly Carson. She has a boy named Bob. Well, me here talk about fella named Bob Carson, Clarkville. You did? Uh. What kind of talk? Well... Me hear him say him get married soon. That's the talk I heard, too. An hombre came through from Clarkville a week ago. I met him in a town some distance west of here. He learned my name and asked me if I knew the kid that was marrying a banker's daughter in Clarkville. Is that what brought you out this way? Yeah, I guess it is, mister. Your name is Carson, too? That's right. Jim Carson. What's the connection? Well, it's a long story. If you'd like to listen, I'll tell you. I'm very much interested. Go ahead. If you don't believe my story, then I'm taking a chance. But i got to tell somebody. There's no reason yet why I shouldn't believe what you tell us. Well, about 17 years ago, I was a happy married man. Living with my wife, my baby son, and my wife's young brother on a little farm back in Pecos County. I see. Living in a cabin near the edge of town was an old miner called Old Pete. The town knew he owned a lot of gold, that he didn't trust banks, and that he buried that gold somewhere, keeping just enough to live on. Mm -hmm. They said he carried a map of where he hid the gold. Well, one night I was riding out to my place and was approaching Old Pete's cabin. Guess Molly will be waiting supper for us, fella. A little late tonight. That shot. Came from old Pete's place. Come on, boy. Get up there. Oh, oh boy. Oh, there. Oh. Somebody shot Pete. Run out the back way. It's no use. He got away. Some hombre wearing a mask. You better look at old Pete. He wanted a map. 
I made map in two parts. He got only one part. Other parts under mattress. You, you take it. Maybe someday. Maybe, <coughs> maybe there's something I can do. Huh? Too late. Get other part of map now. All right, Pete. Uh, look here. Under where my head is. Sure. There don't seem to be any. Oh, here it is, Pete. What do you want me to do with it? Dead. Poor old Peach gone. Well, I'll put this part of the map in my pocket. I guess I'd better go get the sheriff. Yeah, I heard shooting over this way, and I... Jim, what you doing here? What's happened to old Pete? Oh, howdy, Tom. I, I'm glad you come along. Pete's been killed. Who shot him, Jim? I don't know. Some hombre went out the back door as I came in the front after I heard the shot. That's funny, Jim. I came up the back way. I didn't see anybody leaving. But well, somebody did leave just the same time. It's too bad you didn't come along sooner. Maybe then you might... What are you staring at, Tom? Is your gun here on the table, Jim? Looks like it. Well, sure, that's my gun. I said it there after... After I... you shot old Pete, maybe? What? Say, I, I told you that... This gun's just been shot, Jim. Only one bullet used, too. Sure, I, I shot after the hombre. You must have heard two shots, Tom. His and mine. I heard only one, Jim. You see here, even if you are Molly's brother, you... Easy, Jim, I got you covered. Hell, look here, Tom. Just what are you aiming to do? I ought to turn you in for murder. You being my brother-in-law, I'm giving you a chance before the others get here. Now get on your horse and ride. Don't stop even at home. Set out for Arizona territory and don't come back, Jim. Now get going. But I didn't do it, Tom. If I run away, they'll suspect... They'll hang if you don't. Now don't tempt me, Jim. Get going right now or I'll have to take you in. Now get riding. Pronto. So there was nothing else for me to do. I left without even seeing Molly and the baby again. And made my way into Arizona territory. You've been there all this time? No. I grew this beard and sideburns, and then after a few years, I rode back to Pickers County. Huh? I hunted for a masked man that might look like the hombre that killed Pete. That's why I took a shot at you. It was that mask that got me excited. I see. I learned that Molly had moved and was living in Clarkville. I didn't dare try to see her or the kid knowing that Tom was still living with him. Then I heard the boy was going to get married. Oh? I decided I'd get a look at the wedding and see what kind of a man he turned out to be. Someday I hope to find Peach Killer. But it seems hopeless after all this time. Whatever happened to the part of Pete's map he gave to you? I still got it. It's no good without the other part. Yes, I know. And the man who has the other part is the killer. Then, then you believe my story? You don't think I killed him? I believe you, Jim. And if the killer is still in this section of the country, perhaps I can help you find him and clear your name. Stranger, if, if you could do that, I'd... Well, I'd do anything you ever asked me to do. My reward would be in seeing a wrong writer, Jim. Now, I have a plan that will bring the killer to light. If he is still around. Tomorrow, we'll start to put that plan into effect. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. It was dusk of the same day on which the Lone Ranger had met and talked to Jim Carson. In town, Jim's son, Bob, stepped from the door of the bank and started toward his home. Bob! Bob, wait a minute! Huh? Oh. Oh, it's you, Uncle Tom. Oh, you'd better come along home to supper. Oh, well, I gotta see a couple of hombres over in the cafe. I've been waiting to talk to you. Talk to me? What about? Well, uh, look, Bob. Uh, I'd uh, come to the point I, I need a bit of money. Now, oh, look, Uncle Tom, I, I gave you $10 yesterday. I haven't any more to give you. Oh, you work in the bank, don't you? What difference does that make? That money's not mine. Oh, well, aren't you going to marry the banker's daughter? Yes, I am. But I... I can't give you any more money. Oh. I wonder what that girl and her old man would say if they learned the truth about your father. What do you mean by that? I mean my sister Molly's a fool. Skimped and saved to educate you. Kept you thinking you were really somebody. Making you believe Jim Carson died like a hero. Now, look... There's something you want me to know, tell me. Then go on back to your cronies at the cafe. Ah, getting high and mighty since you took up with those swells, aren't you? Well, Molly married a no-good hombre who lit out after killing a poor old coot, leaving her with you to raise. Your pa's never been heard of since. You lie. Yeah, there's strong talk coming from you. Maybe banker Blake won't think it's a lie when I tell him... So if you don't want him to know, you better get me some money. Why, and you dirty <laughs> <laughs> Now, next time, you'll get worse. So keep out of my way. You little coyote. Hit me, will he? His own uncle. I'll get even with him for that. <laughs> the following night when Tonto rode into the Lone Ranger's camp where Lone Ranger and Jim Carson were waiting. He told them that Bob had broken his engagement with the banker's daughter. The next day, Bob was at one of the teller's windows when one of his fellow workers came to him. Bob, Mr. Blake wants to see you in his office. All right. Thanks. He said, uh, come in right away. I'll take over here for you. All right. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Oh, I... I didn't know Mary was in here. I had no idea... Dad's idea, Bob. Not mine. Uh, sit down, Carson. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Mary has told me about your uh, sudden decision. Uh, tell me, don't you love my daughter, Bob? Dad, please. I... I just can't go through with it, Mr. Blake. I... I can't tell you my reason. I never want to see you again, Bob Carson. Oh, Mary. What is it, my boy? Why don't you confide in me? I planned a bright future for you here. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Blake. I can't tell you. I'll be leaving the bank as soon as possible. Good day. short time after the arrival of the stage that afternoon, Jim Carson, dressed in clothes cut in Eastern style and wearing eyeglasses, entered the cafe and went to the bar. Good, mate. What do you have, stranger? The best you have. Hold one for yourself. Yes, sir. Staying in town long, mister? Um, not very long. He's up. Uh, I saw you getting off the stage. Staying at the hotel, ain't you? That's right. Guess I didn't catch your name. Well, I'm going by the name of Hunter. Jim Hunter. Uh, cattle buyer, maybe? No. Uh, came this way in a little business. Matter of fact, I had a brother who died out this way some time ago. Old Pete Hunter. 
He uh, sent me half a map showing where he buried his gold. <laughs> what good's half a map? None. But he gave the other half to a friend of his. That's who I'm looking for. What's the friend's name? I don't know. He didn't say in his letter. I guess he forgot. Then he died, so I never found out. If uh, any of you hear of anybody wandering around with half a map, uh, some gold, just send them to me at the hotel. Room 102, huh? I'll be there after 8 o'clock. You uh, really think there is gold? Positive. He had plenty hit over in Pickett's County. I'm going over there later to hunt for the friend who has the other half of the map. Well, I'll see you later. Yes, sir. Well, fellas, did you hear that? Yes, yes sure. sure. If any one of you Omri's has that other half of the map, just take it to room 102 at the hotel after 8 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's out looking for a needle in a haystack. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After eight o'clock, when Tonto approached the Lone Ranger in the shadows alongside the hotel. You see, man, come to hotel desk. Hear him ask for room 102. He may be the one, Tonto. You know what to do. Huh? I'll go around to the window of 102 in case of trouble. Hurry, Tonto, there isn't much time. I told Carson if anyone came to keep him waiting for at least ten minutes. Meet me under that window when you get back. Ah, me do it. A short time later, Jim Carson heard the knock for which he was waiting. Come in. You, Mr. Hunter? <laughs> That's the name of go by. I heard you were in town. I'm Tom Jensen. Howdy, Jensen. I understand you got part of a map from your brother, old Pete Hunter, who died some years ago. That's right. Well, I'm the friend he gave the other half to. Yeah. Sure. I got it right here. I see you keep one hand on your gun, mister. <laughs> I don't take any chances. <laughs> now, if you really have the other half, maybe I'll show it. Sure, why not? Let's compare them, see if they match up. That's a good idea. Oh, uh, what do you take off your spectacles for, mister? They can't read with these on. So you were Pete's friend, eh? Friend enough to know you couldn't be his brother. What do you mean by that? I thought there was something familiar about your voice. But now with the glasses off, I know who you really are. Jim Carson. All right. Now you know, Tom. But I know this much. Your pin with that map proves that you murdered old Pete that night. <laughs> it does, huh? You're the one they've been looking for, Carson. Now I'm taking both halves of the map, and then I'm turning you in. I'll be quite a hero for catching a killer who's been at large as long as you have. You mean you really did shoot old Pete and come back and blame me and I fell for it? Yeah. I was just guessing before, but... Well, it doesn't seem possible. Yeah, that's just what did happen, Carson. You butted in at the wrong time, so I had to beat it. But when I saw who it was, I knew I could scare you into leaving for Arizona. Of course, telling you this doesn't mean anything. Because nobody would believe you. You're the one they want. Yeah, you rotten killer. You ruined my life once. But you're not going to spoil the rest of it. Why, you... I'll get rid of you now and get praised for shooting a murderer. We were listening outside, Tom Jensen. We got the whole story. I'll kill this guy. Oh, my arm. That shot came through the window. And just in time, too. Take Jensen to the jail, boy. I heard him call you Carson. Any kin to Molly and Bob Carson, stranger? Yes, yes. Molly is my wife. Young Bob's your son, huh? You better get over to see him. From what we overheard, you've been away for a long, long time. Later, at the Carson home... Howdy, stranger. Who did you wish well, to see? Don't you... Don't you know me? 
Jim. <laughs> no, Molly, everything's all right. Uh, who is it, Mom? What are you crying for? Bob. Bob, this is your father. My father? But I thought... Well, that is Uncle Tom. I told me that... your Uncle Tom made a bit of a mistake, Sean. Oh. There he is, Mr. Blake. So you're Bob's father, huh? Well, the whole town is talking about what you've accomplished single-handed. Let me shake your hand. Well, sure, Mr. Blake. <laughs> Mrs. Carson, I hate to tell you about uh, well, Tom Jensen... But seems he killed the man your husband was blamed for killing. Tom? Tom did that? Well, Molly, don't get the feeling. Well, after... After what he did to us, Jim, he deserves whatever punishment he gets. Uh, Bob, uh, son, don't stand there looking. Mary's in the doorway there. Hello, Bob. Oh, Mary. Mary, now it's all right. I have a dad, and he is a hero, so... You two run along and talk things over. Yeah. All right, Ma. Honey. Oh, Tell Mary. me, Jim, however did you get to prove Tom did the killing? Well, I had help, Molly. A masked man. He planned it all. Because of him, we're together again. And I can give Bob a wedding gift, the gold that old Pete left. Well, you know, I'd like to know who the masked man was who helped you, Jim. Well, I can tell you who that is. Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Who? He's the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>